Guys, today we're gonna do something extremely different. And by the way, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing, smash that thumbs up. I wanna do a DIY financial series, guys, okay? So this is gonna be multiple videos that are gonna follow up one after another. Today we're gonna talk about specifically the psychology of finances, okay? And I'm not specifically gonna be talking about buying stocks, but I'm gonna be talking about more of your financial world as a whole, okay? And I'm gonna give you two stories, guys, that are gonna blow your mind. Clients that I've had in the past, I'm not gonna use any names. We're gonna go over how these two people thought differently about money and what the impact of that was. So very interesting stuff, guys. I think you're gonna find this fascinating and very, and very helpful as well. So we all have different reasons for investing, but at the end of the day, it's all about freedom. Why do some people find success and why do others have trouble? Is it an element of luck or is it an element of mental behavior? Before we get into these two clients, guys, I have a big announcement. Our sponsor today is going to be Moo Moo. It is literally Robin Hood on steroids. It's actually more interesting than TD Ameritrade so far as far as news feeds goes, IPO markets, crypto, very, very innovative uh, platform here. So I'm going to leave a link in the description, guys. Get five up to five free stocks worth $3,000 with them. And anytime you bring somebody on, you get one stock of Lucid Motor. And overall, guys, I think this platform is very, very innovative. One of the highlights I like about this platform is you can see other people's portfolios and what they're holding. So really quick, these are the top performers today. The charting is pretty intense. Um, the scanners are awesome. Your cell phone um, app is very, very innovative and integrated. And integrated Two individuals, app. oddly enough, both were around the same age. They both were 35, 36 years old. And what makes this so interesting is the fact that when you take an, an initial meeting with people that are possibly interested in investing or becoming a client, you're not really doing any really talking about strategies or anything of that nature. Now, sometimes the, the conversation can go that way, but really you're just trying to learn their financial world, basically what they do for work, what's their biggest concerns, what's their biggest goals, what's their three-year plan, their five-year plan, their 10-year plan. And you go through their, their debts and their income and just see kind of what their financial balance sheet looks like. And this is a normal approach that you would take on your first initial meeting, just getting some basic information on the individual. So individual one is single, makes $350,000 a year, drives a very nice vehicle, has $750,000 on a mortgage, has construction loans on that mortgage because they bought a property on the water and as they started repairing it, they realized it had more and more problems and basically this thing turned into a money pit. Along with that $750,000 mortgage, they had $35,000 in credit card debt and they also had about fifty or $60,000 left on a very expensive SUV that they were driving. They wanted the meeting to consolidate all their debts and figure out how to pay it off as fast as possible. They had about $10,000 in their savings account and they were basically living paycheck to paycheck as $10,000 was basically one month of living cost for them. And when you do these, when you do these, they call them fact finders. When you're doing these fact finders, there's a couple things you really want to stress and that is paying off bad debt, at least six months of emergency, emergency savings account and having appropriate insurances in place in case of something ever happened to you. After that, you can start talking about investment strategies. But the problem was we couldn't even get to that point for years down the road. And what does that mean from an advisory standpoint is I'm basically never gonna get paid. I'm basically never getting paid anytime soon for any sort of information I give them as they are so far away from becoming a client that I will never be able to make money for them, right? If I can, if I help them consolidate debt and help them pay off bills, that could be a two, two to three year process. I get compensated zero dollars for that. So, and your time is worth something, right? So that that becomes very difficult as an advisor to uh, to really do the right thing for the client. So person number two, oddly enough, made seventy five thousand dollars a year. The had a wife with three kids, and the wife was a stay-at-home mom for the most part. They just paid off their house, so meaning they have no mortgage. They had $60,000 to invest in the first meeting, and they were willing to put 
three to four thousand dollars a month away for the next 15 to 20 years they showed up to the meeting driving a camry that was completely paid off so essentially they had zero debt they had plenty of cash and savings they were willing to put sixty thousand dollars into starting their investment strategy that's minus their savings account okay they they had an additional 20 or twenty five thousand in savings so total they had about eighty five thousand liquid so when we really start diving into the two different personalities that I'm working with here, one individual was very emotional behavior, right? Uh, instant gratification and mentality of wanting to keep up with the Joneses. Though they made a great amount of money for their career, they really took that money for granted and thought that that was going to last forever. And if they got fired tomorrow or if something ever happened where they could not work, they'd really be in a very, very bad situation. And as crazy as it sounds, with that 350,000 that they made a year, they were still living outside their means, okay? Person number two, I couldn't believe how well they managed their money. They were beyond disciplined and motivated. To, so they knew that going into it, and so they made a pact to really live below their means and save a lot of money, so that way there they would never be stressed about finances. And then they found themselves in a situation where they paid off their mortgage in 15 years, had tons of cash, and in a great situation to really start their investment journey. And when you sit down and talk to both individuals, both had college educations and were extremely intelligent. The biggest difference was between the two individuals, one understood the psychology of money. If I don't need the biggest house, the best car, the nicest clothes, and going out all the time, then maybe be a lot less stressful and I can position myself better for my future. And that day taught me a lot of different things. One is obviously never judge a book by its cover. And two is you can learn something from anybody. But he basically did the opposite of what everybody else does. When a new cell phone comes out and it, you think it's time to update, as long as he can still make calls, text messages, and get on the web, didn't care. Would only shop in clothing stores that had sales, sometimes even went to Salvation Army to buy suit jackets and or dress pants. We live in a very wealthy country and the dollar can mean so much more if you know what you're doing with it.